Amen. I believe that the prayers are getting results. I believe that God is still God of us. He still honors our prayers. He still loves us. And he's still committed to us as long as we are committed to him. Amen. In this hour, it is very important for us to be committed to him. That's what this is all about. Gone are the days when you depend on grandmama's prayers. God is wanting us to take responsibility, full responsibility for our behaviors in this end time so that we will do the things that are pleasing to him so he can do what is pleasing to us. Does that make sense? It's an even exchange. I don't know why the church has gone so far from teaching these things, but I'm learning even as I'm on the internet, people are coming and telling me that, man, are we listening to you? Cause man, I, nobody's saying it or we're not hearing this enough or it's not. And I'm like, what else is there to preach in the end times other than live right? Like, what else are you talking about when you're preaching during this kind of crisis? I just don't understand what is more important than people getting saved. Like if you're a preacher of the gospel and you're not preaching the gospel right now, you're not a preacher of the gospel. Like what else is there to talk about? We've done the miracle season harvest, breakthrough, destiny, and purpose. We did that all in the 90s. Then in the 2000s, we've done the name it and the claim it and walk around it seven times and receive it and give me this and give me that. And we've done all that in the 2000s. It is 2020 at the end of the road and you're finding something else to preach about other than the coming of the Lord Jesus. I don't even understand. Like, why, why wouldn't you be preparing people? Do you have that much of you in your own heart that you would still preach for money? You would still preach for views and likes. You will still preach for an audience. You will still tickle the itching ears in this hour. Y'all, I'm not, I'm not listening to anyone that's not concerned about my salvation in this end time. Amen. Every time. I mean, I, I've been trying to sleep all week. Lord been waking me up three, two, three, four o'clock all week. Just an alarm going off in my own heart for his people because people are already starting to go back on what they promised. When the COVID first started, everybody was seeking him and fasting and crusty lipped and ashy need. Everybody was just trying to get God to help. Now that it, we're, it seems like we're on the other side of it and folks are getting comfortable. It's just like the children of Israel. Everyone is going back to business as usual and we're forgetting what time it is. Well, I'm sorry, ABC, but I'm not going to let you forget what time it is. Because God won't let me forget what time it is. We had some real life things just happen that had never happened this way before. And those alarms are still going off in my spirit. And they should be going off in yours for your loved ones, for your family. You should be concerned enough about the people around you to talk about the coming of Jesus and to live this thing until he returns. Amen? COVID-19 has brought out the best and the worst in people. How many of you know that's true? This crisis has shown the true motives, the true motives of men. Yes, it has. A good pandemic, which there is no good pandemic, but y'all understand what I'm saying. A real good pandemic, a real good testing, a real good trial or any other crisis will always bring out what is truly on a person's heart. How many of you know that to be true? Amen. I've been getting so many emails and messages from people that are simply losing their minds behind this stay home ordinance and social distancing. They're losing their minds. Yeah, they, they've never been around their own family this long. They, I mean, they just can't get along. 
Folks ready to kill each other. And I always tell them, that's always been in your heart. It just took a pandemic to bring it out. The true you will show in a time of crisis. The way you respond when crisis strikes shows what's been in your heart all along. You may have hid it for years. You may have disliked your husband or your wife for years. You may have lived in regret and wish you didn't have them kids. Wish you didn't have that married him because he don't have a job good enough for you. You wish you hadn't married her because she, she, she using you, whatever the case. That's been in your heart all along. That didn't just happen because you were thrust together in confinement. But a good pandemic, a real good crisis is going to always bring out who you really are. If you've been drinking uncontrollably and smoking and went back to all of that, that's always been in you. Even when you walked around saying you were delivered, you weren't. Because now this test is going to prove it. Amen. Those that are pure in motive during a crisis will want God's will. So if you're pure, the Bible said, blessed is the pure at heart, for they shall see God. Not just in the end when he comes back. They shall see God, meaning experience God, if you're pure in heart. So if your heart is pure, crisis is going to make you get closer so you can see God and find out what his true will and his plan is, if that's what's in you. You're trying to find God and his plan in this hour. You're going to depend heavily upon him and what he says and who he is. Amen. You may have been wilding before it. But as soon as the pandemic hit, you know it's time to change this. It's time to fix this. I'm going to find the will of God for me during this crisis. Psalms 99 says, the Lord also will be a refuge for those oppressed. A refuge in times of trouble. God doesn't have a problem with you flocking to him and running to him in times of trouble. Sometimes he sends or allows trouble to come, so you will do that. Amen. It's just like a child with your child. You allow certain things to happen to your children. You allow them to just, hey, they need to go through that. They need to experience that. You know you've said it. You know you've threatened. Okay, all right, you're going to need me. You're going to need me. You know you've done that. And they always end up needing you because God is going to make sure they do. Amen. So, the Bible says that he's a refuge in a time of trouble. We're in a time of trouble right now, and he needs to be the refuge. And in this hour, those that are motivated by hate and envy and the other works of the flesh have not changed at all. Isn't it funny? COVID can't even change them. Somebody was sending me, they're going to have a pandemic concert with Lil Wayne and all of them. I'm like, y'all want to listen... Y'all finna wake up hell during COVID? I'm trying to get as close to God as I can. You think I'm finna sit up and listen to some demons rapping? During this time? When we don't know what tomorrow holds? We don't know? I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not listening to the devil. I'm not watching the devil during a pandemic. Yeah, but those motivated by hatred and all of these things, they haven't changed. This thing, COVID crisis is not enough to cause them to repent and turn from their wicked ways. They are still being wicked. These people are reprobate, the Bible says, concerning the faith, because they believe God will protect them while they please themselves. Let me tell you something. God is not going to protect you while you please yourself against his will. When you go outside the will of God, oh, I remember the old song, the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. Why is it safe? Because when you're obedient to him, he watches for you. So what's the flip side of that? If I'm disobedient, I don't understand. How do you pray to a God that you act and behave nothing like? You don't act like.
like God. So who are you praying to? Psalm 66 and 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. How many of you believe the Bible? The Bible just said, if you regard iniquity in your heart, harboring sin in your heart, try not. How do you hide sin from the one that made you and sees everything? How do you even come before him with that on your heart? It's impossible. The psalm said, if I regard iniquity, if I have this hatred and jealousy and envy and spite and all these things in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. I hope y'all are listening to me. Self has to die in this hour. Your selfish motive, your selfish inclination, your selfish agendas, your selfish sins, all must go. Self time is up. It had a good run. The church grew. We had the era of the mega church. Hundreds, thousands of folks, TV, satellites. Christ became popular. It became cool to be a Christian. You could be a youth pastor and wear tight skinny jeans and slick your hair back and look like a punk rocker so you can appeal to the gen It was cool to be Christian. So what's about to happen now? Now we're about to see how you're going to behave when it's not cool. No longer cool to be a Christian. When the Christians are labeled terrorists, when the Christians are labeled crazy, when the cra they think we're crazy for having this. Right now, there are people calling City Hall right now thinking that we're here spreading something. We're outside in cars. But because we're preaching the gospel or we're here gathered in fellowship to God, devils and demons are upset. Only devils get upset at folks having church. Only the devil gets upset with folks having church. Anybody upset about somebody having church is Satan. I mean, it, that, what can be wrong with you to make you mad? If a, one church, they'd spread, spread nails out in the parking lot. So cars would go to get their tires on fire. I think I said that last week. I couldn't believe it. So they could set folks' tires on flat for coming into church. But, part, but Walmart is full. Home Depot, full. Full parking lot. But we come out here to give glory and honor to God. And they, they, something wrong with us. Yeah, yeah, we're about to see. It was cool to be Christian for a while. It was popular. You could get on Oprah's show and sing millions didn't make it, but I, I, one of the ones who did, and Oprah just cried. Yeah, you could do all of that back in the 90s. But we're about to see 2020 what it really means to be a Christian, what it really means to be a saint of God when they start persecuting you on your job, in your neighborhood, having a neighbor, neighborhood watch meeting about you and don't invite you because you name the name of Christ and Christ is offensive to those that don't want to live up to his standard. The day of the Lord is fast approaching and we must make sure we are in good standing with him before he returns. People ask me all the time, I mean, how do you know? How do you know? You better figure it out. You better figure it out. It's so funny how we figure everything else out. When we need a job, we figure out how to go get one. When we're hungry, we figure out how to go get some food. We figure everything else out. Well, you better figure out. The Bible says work, you better work on it, your own salvation. You better figure it out because we're in the last hour. Mark 14 and 38, watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. Stop making those empty promises on what you're going to do for the Lord. You better do what he says. Amen.
Some of you looking for wives and looking for husbands and, 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 and well, not looking for husbands, but want a husband, ready to be married and start a family. You better consult God. You better get close to God. Some of you want healing for your family. You want healing for your loved ones. You better consult God. We are powerless right now in our own strength. It has to be the power of God. But let me tell you something. You know, miracles, you know, folk always talk about, well, miracles, you know, we don't see the miracles like we used to, and, oh, we don't see the move of God like we used to. What is it going to do? Make us feel better and then go right back out and live the wrong way? Make us, make, make us feel good about church and then go back out and live in sin? Why, why would God give us a miracle? God gave people miracles when their faith was tested. When a miracle was necessary. What do you mean by that? Well, when, the, when, when Pharaoh and when they were chasing the children of Israel and they came up on the Red Sea, a miracle was necessary. But if they didn't have the faith to follow Moses out of Egypt, they wouldn't have put themselves in the position for the necessary miracle. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So as long as you're in the world and you're comfortable in the world, what do you need a miracle for? What is a miracle going to do for you? But when you have the faith to leave the world and walk away from the idols and the idolatry, then miracles will follow. The hour is late. Are you ready? Have you truly had a born-again experience? Are you truly in the faith? Do you really believe? You're about to find out. What are you saved from if your behavior has not changed? What are you praying for if you will not obey the answers when they come? What are you saved for if you yourselves cannot walk in forgiveness? If Jesus cracks the sky this very minute, will you be ready to meet him face to face? Luke 13 and 24, and then I'm closing, says, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and has shut to the door, and ye begin to stand outside and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Then you will begin to say, but we have eaten and drunk in thy presence. Thou hast taught in the streets. The little freckled boy was standing in the street teaching out in the heat in the sun. I heard him. I was on the roll. I went to the church. I gave to the church. I was a part of the church. But he shall say, I tell you, I know not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Listen, y'all, we are in this hour, and we just have to live this thing until he returns. It's real. It's real. It's real. The Bible said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That doesn't sound like you're comfortable. That doesn't sound like being comfortable is a good thing. That doesn't sound like you can achieve a status and be all right with it. You know, somebody emailed me and told me, said, man, I can't believe, you know, a preacher like you that's been doing it all this time and everything, you would go and stand out in the street and preach. I mean, that's just kind of, you know, that we don't really see people. And I'm like, stand out in the street and preach. Brother, i stand out here if three people was out here and preach. What are you talking about? I'm trying to help people see Jesus. And this hour is severe. What is going on is severe. This is major. We're outside. We out, look, we're outside, we're in cars. And 
they don't want us to go back in. Some of them don't want us to ever go back. That doesn't concern you? That doesn't make you feel that maybe things are changing and they won't ever go back to the way they were? I'm concerned for the body of Christ. I want you to take this seriously, ABC. This time, I want you to take it very, very seriously. Because this is a serious time we're in. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this gathering. And I thank you, Lord, for this word. I thank you, Lord, for your truth. And I thank you, Lord, for your alarm. You love us so much that you'll warn us before destruction comes. You love us so much, God, that you would get our attention and stop us when we are headed in the wrong direction. We love you. you love us so much, God, that you would give us chance after chance to get things right with you. You love us so much, God, that when we were going our own way, you brought the truth to us. And the truth changed us, changed our mind and heart. You loved us so much, and you continue to love us. And what you want from us right now is our hearts totally surrendered to you. So I pray right now that the hearts of your people, those that can hear me, those that will hear me later, that their hearts would be turned to you, God, in this last hour, to be obedient to you, to follow you, to trust in you, so that we can return with you when you come for us. I pray right now, God, for everyone that is in a situation in their home that may be dangerous, in a situation in their home, Father God, that may not be safe. I pray right now that you will touch that husband, touch that wife, touch whoever that is in there that may be causing it. Father, I pray and I join with those that have contacted me and those that haven't about it, God. I pray for their homes. I pray for their children. Father, I pray for that single parent that is left to themselves to raise however many kids it is during this hour and not allowed to leave the house. God, I pray for them. I pray for their mental state, their emotional state, most importantly, their spiritual state. God, I pray for that single man, that single woman who is lonely and suffering loneliness pains. Father God, that they won't get sucked into something illicit during this hour something that they shouldn't. Father God, I pray right now for that person that is using alcohol and that person that is using smokes and weed and all these different things to feel better about their situation. I pray right now that you will help them to come face to face with their loneliness, face to face with that aloneness and heal their hearts, God, so they'll be in a better place when we leave this situation. And I pray God again for our nation and I pray for the politicians, and I pray, God, that you would turn the hand of those in charge. God, give us grace and mercy as your people in this hour. God, we repented for being so comfortable. We've repented for carrying sins. We've repented, Father God, for being about us. So help us in this hour, God. Give us grace and mercy as we continue this fight in the end time. And God, we pray for even those that are in opposition, those that oppose the Christians, those that oppose those that are trying their best to live according to the scriptures. God, we pray right now for grace, mercy, and most importantly, for peace. Peace with our fellow man, peace with our family members, peace with our brothers and sisters. God, we pray for peace in this hour so that we will have good sleep, so that we will not take out our pain and hurt and different things on our family and our bodies and all these things. But God, we will have peace by keeping our mind stayed on you. So I pray, God, for this fellowship, for each and every person under the sound of my voice, Father God, that we will stay and stick to what we promised you until you return for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.